just want to do a little video and kind of talk to you about uh, bulk carrier groups and the AR-15. You basically have like two types. I mean, there's all kinds of different finishes or whatever, but you really have like two types of bolts. You have the AR-15 bolt and you have the M-16 bolt. And you can see the difference here. This is the M-16 bolt. And this is a way you can tell as soon as you pull your bolt carrier group out of your rifle, this right here will tell you what bolt you have. If it is short like this, you have an AR-15 bolt. If it is long like this, you have an M-16 bolt. And you can also see the difference there with the firing pin. Now, the this is actually a little long for a M, uh, AR-15 bolt. A normal AR-15 bolt will have the cut going all the way down to about right here. But this is a little extended version, giving you a little bit more mass, which is good. And it helps with balance and everything inside your rifle. Now, the reason why they do that is so it will not engage an auto sear if you have that inside your rifle. Now, let me state this real quick. A couple people are trying to say on YouTube or wherever or your friends, I've heard a lot that it's illegal to have an M16 bolt in your AR-15 rifle. That is not true. The ATF has actually stated on it several times. It is perfectly legal. It does not make your gun full auto. So therefore it is 100% legal. Nothing wrong with it. Now, your typical mil spec bolt, whether it's a AR-15 or M16 bolt, will be made out of Carpenter 158 steel, which is very strong. It'll also be a uh, shot pinned. And what that means right here is that the, this is your bolt. This is your bolt carrier. Now, the, the shot pinned right here on your bolt means there's like, uh, let's see, the best type of way to kind of explain that is there's like material that has like been bombarded on the surface right here that hardens the steel. It's about the best way I can explain that. Now, it'll also be high pressure tested, which means they test it for pressures greater than what you're ever going to use it for. It'll also be magnetic particle inspected, which means they use magnetic par particles around the surface of your bolt to look for fractures, cracks, any imperfections, or anything like that. Just another way of testing it to make sure it's going to work like it's supposed to. Now, most of your premium bolts that are magnetic or that are high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected will have a mark on the inside of the bolt like this one does. This is a premium bolt from a Palmetto State Armory. And this is the bolt carrier group out of my Ruger AR556. Now this has a black nitrate finish, this has a phosphate finish, and there's a big difference in the finish on these two. In fact, I really love my M16 bolt carrier group, but I prefer this one just because it is black nitrate coated. And the reason for that is it's much more slick. It's really like a, one of those, uh, what is it, like a nickel baron coated? This is really slick, meaning you can run it a lot drier than you could something like this. This phosphate coated needs to really run wet. Okay, now, also, on the inside of your bolt and on your gas key, it'll be chrome plated. I have about 12,000, or maybe a little bit more, about 12,000 rounds through this particular bolt. So, I mean, in here it does have a little bit of carbon buildup inside of here. But you can, this is a brand new bolt, and you can really see the chrome lining inside of there. And you can see it a little bit here. There's chrome plated through there. Now also, the gas key needs to be hardened to USGI specifications. And it also has, needs to have grade 8 fasteners, and it needs to be staked. Now here's a good example. This is a, a classic machine done staking job and this is a classic hand staking job you can really see the difference there now also now 
Another good thing to talk about too, I guess I kind of skipped, is uh, there is another type of bulk carrier group you will see. And that is one that has the slit like this going all the way through. It will not have none of this at all. And that's a Colt design bolt. And the reason for that is there's some AR-15s that have a, it's a auto sear block that is made into the rifle so it can never be made to shoot full auto. And with that block installed in your rifle, your bolt carrier group cannot have this in order for it to function properly. Otherwise, this will catch on the block. So that a slit, if you ever see a bolt that's fully open, that is a Colt design bolt. Now also, if you, you really want to talk about the big major differences between the AR-15 bolt and the M16 bolt. Now, reasons why a lot of people like this bolt better is because, I mean, it slows the rate of fire by touch. I mean, it's, it's so little. In fact, a lot of people will not even notice it. But not only that, like it, you can see how it's got more mass here and here. So it's, it's, it weighs a little bit more, but not much more. And it also, having this here and this being bigger, it has more balance in your rifle, which in, in turn makes your rifle, you know, operate and function more properly like it's supposed to. Now, forgive me if I miss anything going through here. There's a lot to talk about when you talk about your bolt carrier group. Now, also on your bolt carrier group, I can show you here. This right here is where like your hammer will be down. It'll be down like this. When you pull the trigger, it'll slam forward like that. Smack that firing pin just like that. And as it smacks, you can see right there. And it hits the primer and this that's like how your bolt works inside your rifle there now also if you want to let me take this apart for you so we can this is your firing pin pin <laughs> and here's your firing pin typical firing pin this is your cam pin if I can get it out there's your cam pin, and this is your bolt. This is your bolt carrier. These are your gas uh, gas rings right here. Now, really, inside your rifle, kind of think of it like a car. This, your bolt is your piston. This would be like, imagine like a piston in your car. So this is really the heart of your rifle. In fact, the two most important parts on your AR-15 are going to be your barrel and your bolt carrier group. Now, these gas rings here. You can see there's three rings here and each one of them have a little cut. You can see. Now, I've seen some people get bolts and stuff and they come, all three of these little holes are lined up together. That is not how they should be. They should be spread out just like this in order for it to work properly. And what that does is, it doesn't, uh, if you actually, if you have are having ejection problems or anything like that, like, this is your ejector, this is your extractor. So if you are having, like, ejection problems, this right here would be a good place to look. Now, if you do have problems with your gas rings here, what that can cause is, it doesn't allow for the pressure to build up to allow... The, the separation between the bolt face and the chamber. So, I mean, so if you, you these have to be right, or you're not going to get the pressure needed for separation. I mean, that's just kind of a, kind of, a, you know, it's kind of like the best way to say it. And also, the mill spec bolts will have an O-ring inside your extractor here. I don't have a pin punch right now to be able to take this off to show you. But there is a little O-ring it's like a little O with like has like a little spring in it kind of. I mean, and it right here too, like on your bolt, you'll get lots of carbon buildup right here. In fact, I'm sure you can see some on this bolt. Like I said, this has I'd say about twelve to fourteen thousand rounds through this bolt, and it still does not look that bad at all. I do clean after every time I shoot. Now also right in here. 
you see that little bit there you will get a little bit of carbon buildup in there as well now <clears throat> the phosphate coated it's a little rougher but this black nitrate is just slick just like a nickel baron it's just slick enabling you to run this drier than you can this now also I'll show you a good little way here to test to see if you need to replace your gas rings or not to be able to tell if you are having extraction problems ejector problems a good place to start is to check your gas rings and how you can do that is you take your bolt out you have it out just like this and you can set it up now if this slowly starts to fall down then it's about time to replace your gas rings I mean nobody taught me that that's just something I kind of learned I've been using the AR-15 it's since really before I even joined in the army so I mean I've had a lot of experience with them I've kind of learned this on my own nobody showed me now a good reason too why a lot of people it's like the M16 bolt over the AR-15 bolt is you see you get more closure around your firing pin now right here is where you know your, your bolt slides down right here so I mean it is possible I have seen firing pins kind of get hung up a little bit and then what happens is the little pin here that holds your firing pin in place I have seen these bend I've seen them break it does happen I'm not exactly sure like why you can it's kind of weird like you can shoot like your firing pin will go in like this and this right here like I've seen some bolt carrier groups where you can just shoot thousands of rounds and it runs perfect. Then all of a sudden you go to shoot one and this gets hung up a little bit and then this bends real bad or breaks. I'm not sure exactly how that happens, but it does happen from time to time. That can either cause this right here to break or your pin's going to bend or break. So, I mean, it's just a few things to kind of look out for and also... One thing I learned, which I learned after I bought this premium bolt from Palmetto State Armory, most of your mil spec premium bolts, you know, that are high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected, will have a stamp right here somewhere on your bolt, usually about right here. Now, this one does have the stamp in it. And, uh, but what I don't like is about Palmetto State Armory. I guess they do this to save on cost, but normally in order to get that stamp on your bolt, each one, like each bolt will have to get high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected and then it gets the stamp. Well, Palmetto State Armory pulls off the line, meaning there will be a line of their premium bolts coming down. They will just choose a random one, like one out of a hundred or maybe two hundred or maybe three hundred. They'll choose one out of like a hundred. They will test that one bolt and then stamp them all. And I mean, I mean, I, I guess that's okay, but then again, I don't like that. I would rather to know for a fact that this bolt was high pressure tested and magnetic particle inspected not one off the line got inspected so that's kind of one thing to look out for some of these cheaper companies like i really like palmetto state armory don't get me wrong even though i have not used this bolt yet they are on the lower end though for example they're not a sharps bolt which is the best you can get to my knowledge they're not a bcm bolt which is a really good bolt as well so, I mean, they do, like I said, that's just one little way they kind of cut corners and save costs there. So, I mean, I kind of hope I helped, you know, somebody. And if I miss something, you know, kind of don't hold me to it. There's a lot to kind of go over when you're talking about a bolt. This is the heart of your rifle. And I actually, let me get this out really quick. But <clears throat> I actually called Ruger because I was looking at my manual and I wanted to know what what is this bolt is it mil spec what's it made of what you know what is this now 
Uh, when I called Ruger, they never exactly told me what it is made out of. They did say, though, that they cannot just send you a bolt. You have to send them your whole rifle in order to get a replacement bolt. He said it had something to do for legal reasons, and each one had to be tested in the rifle or something like that. That's just a little weird, but, you know, okay. So there's no way to get a replacement Ruger bolt without sending in your rifle. You cannot just buy the bolt, which I thought was a little weird. But please like, subscribe, and share comment let me know what you guys think